Hi guys, White Witch 110 here. I'm going to attempt for the umpteenth time to continue reading Vision of Grandeur. We left Ruth and Cornelia in Ruth's bedroom, noticing the bloody footprints. Cornelia, those weren't there when I came downstairs, I promise you. They're not even my size, Ruth frank frantically informed her. I believe you. There they sat with nothing more to say, wondering how much longer they would endure this nightmare. The answer they knew was as long as they were under the same roof. Concentration on work was non-existent. They followed each other home with only moments between them. I've been racking my brain to explain those footprints. I have no answer, Ruth admitted. Nothing is easy to explain anymore. Neither of us will ever have an explanation for this insanity. Time passed and things never eased. Each night, dreams were only torture for them both. Jason was in my dream again, Cornelia told Ruth. He was in mine as well, Ruth said. He was chasing me through the field with a dagger in his fist. My legs were aching and my breath was difficult to take. His arm was poised to strike when we, when we seen it in the distance. Ruth picked up the story. She knew what they saw. It had been in her dream too. You seen the house in flames. Cornelia's mouth dropped open. Within those flames, I glimpsed the evil. The shape of our torture was so clear. I have never seen anything like it before. Cornelia, it was his face more than twisted. His eyes were barely there and his cheeks so pronounced. His lips were thin, coated in blood that made a horrible noise as it dripped to the floor. It was his blood surrounding my bed, Ruth exclaimed. How did he come out of my dream? To say they were terrified would be an understatement. We are both in, we are in, both in your dream now. Have either of us woken up? What's going on? Cornelia closed, Cornelia close to tears paced the room. If we aren't dreaming, then where is he? A question they didn't actually have an answer to. The footprints ended just off the carpet. There was nothing to follow. They stood eerily still listening. Except for the normal creaking, there was nothing out of place. Neither moved from their spot as minutes turned into a half hour. This is insane. Cornelia was the first to take a step. We're standing here terrified of something we have no idea about. Come on, let's go. Ruth followed Cornelia's heavy, heavy placed foot all the way down the hall to the staircase. Both women peered back to see all was empty. Ruth couldn't stand to be in the house. She suggested they go for a drive. There was a small park not far by, the ma by a man-made lake. The women spent many hours there as children. They recalled school picnics as well as family gatherings. It was a place where they felt safe. As the sun once again began to fade, the brilliant sky of orange, yellow, and hues of blue, they reluctantly went home. It wasn't easy to approach the house in any other mood but apprehensive. They must have sat in the car as long as they stood in Ruth's room. A glance at one another, each took a breath, then opened their car door. Hand in hand, there was an attempt to be a united front. The house was unusually cold. Ruth walked over to the thermostat the plastic cover on the dial was cracked. I don't think it's working. She moved the wheel to hear the furnace turn on. Nothing. Suppose we should have someone check this on Monday. 
Cornelia shook her head in agreement. As Ruth made her way upstairs, Cornelia ran her finger over the damaged plastic. In her head, she heard his voice. Don't bother. I'm everywhere. You can't escape. You never will. The last word drawn out in a low menacing tone. She wanted to tell, to tell Ruth, but decided against it quickly. Each move forward, Cornelia kept watch for the surroundings. Where could the body to this voice be? The creak of each step seemed to go on forever. The staircase felt like a 12 story building. Standing in the hall, she debated whether to run or continue walking. Cornelia found a middle point and progressed cautiously to her room. Once inside, she gave a deep breath of relief. Don't get too comfortable. She felt the hot breath by her ear. She froze. Her eyes scanned the room and it was empty as it should be. Where was he? Why was he doing this? She didn't have the guts to ask. Did Cornelia need to? He seemed to be able to hear her thoughts. Slowly, she crawled into bed fully clothed. The thought of an invisible being watching. She wasn't taking no chance. The women fell asleep as always. A blanket of darkness descended upon the house. Not even light from the street post made its way through. Every inch of the house and surrounding area within a few feet was dark, though even this word did not describe it. With this blackness came a heavy feeling, almost a burden the house had to carry. Dreams were set in the field once again. The friends stood at the opening in the ground. Air rising from its small gap was colder than cold. The women could see their breath in this single column. From within, a voice beckoned to them. Without a thought, they slid into the opening, grappling the wet earth all the way down. The familiar surrounding and pathway. Thick water oozed out of the mud-packed walls. The smell was pungent. There was no telling where the origin of this foul liquid was. The temptation to touch was high, but common sense took over. A dense fog appeared on the pathway to the left. The women backed away. This wasn't something they'd be able to walk through. To them, it was a brick wall or a monstrous mouth able to consume them in one swift bite. They turned to the right, unaware that the identical fog had been progressing towards them. Climb! Cornelia shouted. Ruth dug her manicured nails into the dirt wall in front of her. Her foot took hold and her hands reached above her head. It was working. They were moving above the reach of whatever might be concealed within the gray mass below. Keep climbing. We're nearly to the top. Cornelia continued to offer support of her friend's agility. In reality, the freedom they believed only feet away was a mirage. Soon, they fell down, disappearing into the combined mass below. That's where I'm leaving it today. I have to write more. <laughs> As I had stated before, I am usually writing this at work in the morning, at lunch, and sometimes at break. Sometimes you'll hear a hesitation because I haven't read it first before I read it to you. In this case, I didn't. So there are a few things I'll have to go back and fix. Maybe I hit a word twice or typed it twice. But um, I'll take care of that. So I hope you enjoyed this part. What's going to happen next? I don't even know myself until I sit down and start writing have to be in the proper frame of mind for it. So until, gizzy, until the next time, as always from a 
cloudy Ottawa. Ciao for now.